Um, so moving right along, uh, Llewellyn, who a lot of you probably know already, is going to be talking to us about uh, teaching kids programming, which I think is uh, an essential thing that our society needs to do a little bit better. So here he is. Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco. In my day job, I teach programmers, uh, but I also do a lot of volunteer work teaching kids to program with programs like DigiGirls. And in working with these kind of programs, we've had to find a lot of curriculum to go and teach the kids. And we find stuff that looks like this. It's sort of lab-based. And you have this thing that you're going to go to the computer and type in, and it's going to produce this result. And, and basically, almost all of the labs out there look like this. And the question that sort of started kicking around for us is, what are we really teaching the kids? And I, I want to say that I think that we're not teaching them very much. We're teaching them just sort of the copy to, to recite. And, and to sort of illustrate this, I want to take it to some different domains and talk about it. And the first one I want to talk about is cooking, because I, I like to eat, and I'm Italian. So on occasion, I've taught people how to cook spaghetti sauce. And it goes sort of like you would expect. You know, you give somebody a recipe, and you take them into the kitchen. and you know, you just start going through the recipe. You show them how to chop the onions, you show them how to fry them. And if they follow all of those procedures correctly, at the end of it, they're gonna end up with some red sauce that it looks like spaghetti sauce. But they don't really understand what goes wrong. And so when I started teaching people, I started doing things like adding a little too much oregano and making them taste it and see how it's bitter. And then have them add some basil so it can sweeten it up. Now you can sweeten it with other things like sugar, but not if you're Italian. And and we did other things. We did too much oil so we could see how it's runny and see how tomato paste sort of gives you the right consistency that you're looking for. And I want to say that when you do this, you end up with someone who can't just produce spaghetti sauce. Like, they know how to cook. You've essentially created, like, a MacGyver of cooking. <laughs> that person can open the refrigerator and see ketchup and capers and cilantro and not only make something that kind of looks like spaghetti sauce, but actually tastes good. <laughs> And this ingenuity is what is missing from the way we teach. Let's switch our domains for a second back to math. Here's like a simple math problem that you'd see most of the time if you're in school. And it's important. We need to know how to do percentages. But again, the thing that's missing here is the intention. And that's simple. All you have to do is put the English of what made this math statement and then show the kids how to translate it. Show them that the is is an equal. Show them that the of means multiply. And when you do this, you end up with much smarter math people. You end up with mathematicians who later in life might ask questions like, how did my business change over last year? Right? That's something that would be useful for the average person later on. But it, if you knew the intention, you can take that and reverse it. Put it back into the formula. And the formula will be slightly different, but now your math skills are applicable. And you can actually solve the problem. And you're no longer just doing formula. You're actually doing something intentionally. So let's switch domains one more time. Let's go back into how we need to bring intention into how we teach our kids to program. And I'm going to start with the database programming. Now, database programming, intention is usually in, in the standard course at the very, very end. Right? You're going to learn how to put together your database. You're going to learn how to put data in it. And eventually, you're going to get some statement that looks like this. And the statement looks like this is going to be to get something out of it. And they'll talk about what the different things mean, but the intention here is very obscure. And so when we teach, well, we're teaching 13-year-old girls, so we need something they want to do. So we have them search for hot guys. And then we show them how to take what they want to find and turn it into a query. And at that point, it means more to them, and they can go. And it also it produces different results. It produces results that have more of the intention in there. So if your own databases at work look more like the select PLL, then perhaps you've lost the intention there too. We also do it with regular programming. Now here we do things, we've created things called recipes, but they're not recipes of, of functions to do. It's the intention. And we start with the intention, like up on line one, show the tortoise. And we show them how to translate that. And now, because it's intentional, we can run it. It's like tasting the sauce in between. They can see that the tortoise actually shows up on the screen. And then they can continue through doing the next step of intention. Now, because you're looking for intention, you might have to skip down, right? No point changing the color of the line if you don't have a line being drawn. 
But when you skip down, you can see the intention of that tortoise too. And when you start teaching the kids this way, you get ingenuity into the kids. You get smarter kids. You're basically creating the little MacGyvers of the world, which is something we sorely need. So next time you're teaching a lab, please think about the intention. Thanks very much.